All right, guys, this should be the last chapter of the return of the greatest haul ever. Six, about around 650 books that uh, Scotty Hines gave me for free earlier in the year. We're down to the X-Men. Uh, these are X-Men books or X-Men related books. So uh, let's get to it. Get this over with. Because I've made two, three videos before this. And I'll tell you what, man. It's just making a video and it's just talking about comics, but it can be taxing. All right. So right off the bat, we got a few uh, mini series here. It looks like one shots. Uh, Kitty Pride, Wolverine, uh, six issue mini series. Uh, I think Alan Milgram did the art and stuff. And uh, so one, two. I think uh, Wolverine. I've never read this. I've had two, three issues of it, but I've never read this. I know Chris Claremont did write it. Pretty sure. Three. So uh, I think he took Kitty to Japan. This is where they really became really close. So whenever you would see Wolverine flip out on, you know, people on the X-Men for hurting Kitty or picking on Kitty or something like that, he would take up for her. And then as Kitty became a, just a tad bit darker with her new look, she went from being like Ariel to Sprite or maybe Sprite to Ariel. She had a few names and then she became Shadowcat. And, uh, you know, it was from hanging out with Wolverine and stuff. That's why when... Uh, Colossus cheated on her on the battle planet Secret Wars and came back and broke up with her because he was romantically in love with an alien from another planet and stuff. Wolverine took him out and got his ass kicked by the... made it to where Colossus got his ass handed to him by the Juggernaut in a bar, in a bar fight. All right, Amazing Adventures. These are reprints of early, early uh, X-Men stories, which is just fine with me. I'm sure these are Kirby art. This is before the X-Men really took off. X-Men Alpha Flight Part 1 and 2, the beginning of the, kind of a prelude to the Asgardian Wars, which was just a phenomenal feat by Chris Claremont. Um, I wish, yeah, right before the Morlock, you know, a couple years later would be the Morlock Massacre, and that's where the X-Men changed for a lot of people. But, uh, oh my gosh, it was brilliant. Taking, I mean, embracing what the X-Men were and traveling to a different part of the Marvel Universe that the X-Men hadn't really messed around with too much. And just wrote this fantastic story, the place where the mutants fit in, and maybe they didn't fit in, and got caught in being enchanted. Yeah, and this is Heroes for X Men, Heroes for Hope. Uh, this was to Feedy Africa back in the day. And, you know, that's an Art Adams cover, and they got a page bus. Every page was done by a different team, and Stephen King came in and wrote another team, and I think Bernie Reichston drew it. And it's a whole page of, like, I think, of, you know, Kitty Pride just sitting there starving to death, and, you know, the hunger is actually uh, uh, there's actually a figure that represents hunger or something, you know. All right, Extent okay, just some random shit. I keep ending up with this issue with the New Mutants, man, number ninety-five, and I don't know why. It's Rob Liefeld and you know. and X Factor number uh, seventy. This is probably my second or third time having this book, if not my second copy now, and I'm fine with it because it's a Mike McNola cover. But uh, Mike Manola, you know, did not do the interiors. I need number three of this. I got classic X-Men. This is where they reprinted uh, the X-Men. I can't. I think they started with giant size X-Men. So this would be issue 94, if I remember right. But the page count was different in the 70s than when this started in the uh, 80s, 86. And uh, so you would get um, Chris Claremont writing stories that kind of fit in between. Uh, the pages or what was you know the issues or stuff so you had some retro stories the behind the scenes stuff uh, a lot of this I remember a lot of these were Storm who was running around the uh, plains of Africa topless with you know being worshipped as a goddess it, Jean Grey was the one that kind of took her out to New York and you, you see how the X-Men became close in the family and showed her how to dress and what all these things were and stuff you know yeah awesome okay got some annuals here I'm going to get into the issues uh, some of these annuals, these are definitely upgrades, or I've already had, but uh, I'm fine with it. This is, I'm pretty sure this is a George Perez uh, drawn issue. This is uh, King Size Annual number three, the debut of Archon, who is a very cool character from another dimension. Uh, number four, with some Doctor Strange in there. Yep, 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 yep. Number five, yeah, I've got this, but it's tore out of hell, so this is definitely an upgrade. Little X Men in there. Uh, a lot of people like this issue, man. Number six. I saw people who just, you got the blood red cover. You got Storm getting turned into a vampire with Dracula before Doctor Strange took his ass out. Uh, number seven with the Impossible Man. 
I read it. I'm going blank right now. And number eight, I this this is a this has a fairy tale story in it. Okay, I don't know if it was a direct sequel or not, but along the line, I think Kitty Pryde told a Christmas story or something. One of the X Men issues. It was kind of taken care of as a fairy tale. And I think this was supposed to be like a cute little sequel and stuff, but I hate the artwork. I just, yeah, I don't want to bum it out. All right, now we're to some X-Men stuff. This is pretty cool. You know, they came out with all these covers that interacted back in 1991. 91, there's an E, yeah. If you wonder why I kind of look at my books, I can see the year here every now and then. But this was in 91 when they came out with three covers to... Uh, X-Men number one, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, right before he left. That looks like I just got two of them. All right, this is two of three. I think there's like four or five of them. I don't know. You know, but they, it was just the X-Men. It was a riff on the original X-Men number one where I think they were all lined up and they were like going after, and one had Magneto, like, come on, you know. Here's some of Jim Lee's great stuff. Chris Claremont was about to leave after like 17 years on the X-Men and making them what they had. And what was really sad is after building that stuff up for 17 years, I think that's for how long he was on there, uh, Marvel kind of gutted everything he had, like, within two or something. It was it was awful. It was awful. Yeah, number three. I think this was Claremont's last issue. And then they came out with number four. Uh, yep, yeah, I knew it wouldn't be in there. Number five was the first Prince of Omega Red. But, you know, they continued. And uh, the Muir Island Saga... Now we're up, it's the same year, 91, you know, brought in Colossus and the Uncanny X-Men. You know, tried to say that he was dead again after just bringing him back to 80. Looks like those are, look at that. That thing's been cut wrong. Huh. And then, uh, they, well, this should have been sensational because they ended up bringing John Byrne back on the X-Men. Uh, he was doing uh, scripting, maybe a little bit of plotting and stuff. Right before these guys took off to, um, took off to Image. First appearance of Bishop, that's always a plus. Second appearance of Bishop. Uh, continuing the Bishop story. Yep, 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 yep. Looks like Will Spertatio. John Romita Jr. comes back. Again, they started, like, bringing back, uh, bringing people back, you know, who used to work on the X-Men and stuff. Then we got the Inferno, Walt Simonson, Louise Simonson, Madeline Pryor versus uh, Jean Grey as, you know, with X-Factor. And that was a lot of build-up that I wasn't aware of when this first came out. And as I put piece together the X-Men history and stuff, uh, and then Mr. Sinister turned around and tried to say that Madeline Pryor was like a clone over That's why Scott fell in front of her. But basically, you can sit there and say that's the Witch King Madeline Pryor versus Jean Grey. Basically, what you got is the wife fighting the old girlfriend that got him back. Yeah, Inferno continuing, Walt Simpson drawing everybody. Number 85, I don't know this is what the significance of this is, unless it's Sam Keith's debut in Marvel, and it's got Speedball in it, Firestar and the Beast. Some random Wolverine issues, 43, 44, I think this is when he went bi-weekly or something. Yeah, late August. This is in the midst of comics going bi-weekly there for a while as a stunt. They took all the X-Men books and they were coming out bi-weekly. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there. There's a few random DC comics over there, but it, it's nothing really worth looking at. I don't like getting up over there. Then we're done. This is it. Thank you, Scotty Hines, for making these uh, videos possible. Thank you for the books, uh, and thanks for watching, and, and uh, hope you're doing all right down there. And uh, that's it, guys. All right, on, 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 to, on to other things now.